Cyber Heathens! I'm Funky Monkey, and I have come to make thee awesome with a heady goblet of Sid. So it's bottoms up, and here we go! Yes, it's 30 years ago this month that the Commodore 64, still to this day the most popular home computer system of all time, was unleashed upon the world. Also, this episode marks my 52nd episode of the House of Love, and to celebrate this... Ahem! Mr. Viking, do you have something to add to this? Damn right I do! Not that I want to intrude on this double anniversary of yours, but... Come on, heady goblet of Sid. Are you trying to get sued? You could have at least consulted me on this. In that case... Would you care to join me on this venture into the deliciousness of the one true king of 8-bit sound? Nah, yeah, sure, what the hell. May as well do it right. Just give me a second. Gotta go get my lucky drinking vessel. And in the meantime, gentle audience, allow me to introduce you to the subjects for this episode. Machine Supremacy. Formed in the Swedish town of Laleå in the summer of 2000 by Robert Schoenström, along with Jonas Röhling and Karl Helmer, keyboardist Andreas Gerden, and a drummer known only as Tobe, Machine Supremacy aren't your typical metal band, if there is such a thing. Now, if you're any sort of fan of my show, you'll know for a fact that there is no such thing as a typical metal band because every metal band is a unique and precious snowflake. But that said, Machinized Supremacy has managed to distinguish itself thanks to a, shall we say, interesting sound. They decided to call their sound Sid Metal, being that they used the Sid station in a goodly proportion of their songs. Now, for the benefit of the less technical Vikings among us, could you explain exactly what is this mystical relic you call Sid? Glad you asked! The SID, or Sound Interface Device, was the sound chip from the Commodore 64, the world's most popular home computer. Long story short, it was a three-voice filtered synthesizer, whose sole raison d'etre was crowning music of awesome. Now, these boys don't actually bring a Commodore 64 into the studios and on tour with them. They use a SID station, a later creation from a company which bought up unused SID chips and repackaged them with a new controller and a whole bunch of other stuff. So then, let us fill our goblets to the brim and drink to the glory of the retro geekery of these Swedish SIDmeisters. Let it roll. Not bad, not bad! What else have we got? Yeah, a little pedestrian that one. Hit me again. Being that these brutal bit crunchers appealed first to the retro crowd, their introductory releases resided firmly in Commodore country. Inventive usage of that sound interface thingamajig gave them some kick-ass tunage, like the previously played Sidologies 1 and 3, with number 2 being released sometime later in 2006. I don't know why, so don't ask me. They also played their first gig at the infamous Back in Time Live in London. Ah, bit live. Now that was a party. Only I've never actually been to there. In the years that followed, Masu recorded and released several songs online for free, including the soundtrack to indie game Jets and Guns, eventually culminating in their first album, Deus Ex Machina, under UK label Music by Design in 2004. Sadly, Music by Design went belly up in 2005. This led them to self-publish their second album, Redeemer, and sell it via their website. 
cut out the middleman and sell directly to the fans. I like the cut of these guys' jib. Of course, the real party started when they got signed to Spine Farm in 2006 and released the official version of Redeemer. Bearing out the occasional lineup change, Starn, Strum, and Roarling being the sole remaining original members of the band as of August 2012, the magnificent Ma Su continued to plow their particular bitular furrow from that day to this, releasing Overworld in 2008 and A View from the End of the World in 2010. But what is it about these synth-wielding Sidsters that makes them so damn compelling? I mean, sure enough, they're masters of the melodic, and they bring both heavy riffs and techie blips with equal aplomb. But they're also politically minded, rock and roll revolutionaries in every sense of the word. In 2001, two of the band formed their own political punk side project called Flack. Sadly, this didn't last, and only three songs were released. Still, progressive polemic powers and pumps its way through the veins of Masu. The message they put out is one of individuality, of not being beholden to politicians or corporations, which is slightly ironic, seeing that they eventually signed up with a moderately sized record label. Not really. Spine Farm are independent of their corporate paymasters, but that's not what's important right now. What is important is the music. And it's damned good music. Machinae Supremacy plugs a jack into your brain and supervolts your synapses until you can charge your iPod simply by looking at it. Their music is simply electrifying. And, naturally, I gotta applaud a band that tinkers with a new sound. I mean, who thought video game chip tunes would mesh with metal so well? Well, regardless, these guys rule. I recommend hopping on YouTube, finding a couple tracks, and just letting yourself get hooked. You'll be glad you did. Personally, my in for the Mighty Masu with their C64 remixes. From there, I devoured all the freebies I could find and really got a feel of their brand of uplifting, chip-infused pop metal. And while some might complain about the whiny singer, I can't imagine a better fit for a band whose interests stem from such a stereotypically nerdy subculture as that of the Commodore 64. So, in summary, Machinai Supremacy is, like all metal bands, pretty damn rad, and it's pretty much guaranteed to make you a better person in the community, in the workplace, in the bedroom, and just in general, really. They got the blips and the riffs to keep everybody satisfied, and it's well worth your time and money to find and purchase their music. In fact, I recommend you do it right now. I'm Funky Monkey, and for the Happy Viking, you've just been served your recommended dosage of both heavy metal and gaming goodness. Rock on, play hard, and drink responsibly. Well, in that case, all that's left for me to do is, uh, plug my show. Watch Frothy Pint of Metal, featuring me, Happy Viking. It's the greatest show you'll ever watch. Like, for real, man, it's, it's the best. Please watch my show. I'm so broke, I need the money, man. Come on, help a brother out. Oh, Mr. Viking. If nakedly begging for viewers like that worked, we both have more viewers than the Nostalgia Critic. Anyway, I've got an ulterior motive for summoning you. There are matters to discuss, but not on camera. To my audience, Thanks for watching, and join me in two weeks for more fun and frolics. So long, folks. Now, Mr. Viking, something needs to be done about Ursa.